Well, today we're in Daniel chapter 10. It's a chapter I call terror. That's what we see here is terror. So really, uh, this chapter is kind of a front porch. We, and we enter through uh, this front porch into the house of chapters 11 and 12, which are going to provide a lot of detail about what's coming for Israel. So as we go through this chapter, I want you to notice that it's clear from Daniel's reaction to this vision that the proper prophecy he received really terrified him. I think he's not terrified for himself so much as for Israel. And um, what a contrast uh, today. I think somehow lots of people, probably not you, since you're in the Word and you're careful to be studying uh, carefully, but I think there's a lot of people around that have this idea that God's Word is always supposed to be encouraging or uplifting or comforting or confidence boosting. Uh, somehow people have gotten the impression that God's Word is just here to make us happy. Um, in reality, the Word is here to make us holy. And uh, we see that here in Daniel, that this Word is not making him happy, but he's uh, being set apart and being used as God's spokesman and God's prophetic voice uh, to his generation and even down to us today as his Word has been preserved. And here we are still reading it. So this word to make us holy then, we can outline it a little bit as we go through here. We see the situation that Daniel's in in the first four verses. And then we see his vision, uh, this terrifying vision in verses 5 through 9. The explanation of the vision in 10 through 14. Daniel then is enabled uh, to withstand, to bear the burden in verses 15 through 19. And then we get a picture kind of behind the curtains of history of a cosmic conflict in verses 10 through 21. So let's take a look in the situation here as we see what's terrifying Daniel. Uh, verse 1, third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. This is uh, 586 BC. Uh, Daniel at this point is in his early to mid 80s. <clears throat> this is about two years um, uh, after Cyrus has issued the decree to allow Israel to return to the land. So Cyrus has issued that, and it's two years later that Daniel is having this vision. You know, I think uh, in Daniel, and we actually see it uh, as well in the book of Malachi, that there must have been this expectation that Israel's kingdom age that was promised by the prophets earlier in Isaiah in Jeremiah and Ezekiel, which you've read, that this kingdom age was was near, is about to dawn. It must have been a high expectation that God is about to bring the Messiah and establish the kingdom. We get to verse 2. It says Daniel had been mourning for three entire weeks. And I'm guessing the mourning here is just a little bit of a speculation, but uh, probably due to the opposition that Israel was getting uh, back in the promised land as they tried to restore the people and to restore the walls and to restore the temple. Um, if you read the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, Haggai and Zechariah, they all tell about the situation that these returning exiles were facing. And it wasn't good. They were being uh, opposed, uh, Rampant unholiness, uh, abandonment of the law, and uh, it all has to be addressed. And Daniel, hearing of these things probably, as he's back still in Babylon, maybe too old to make the journey across the desert, is hearing about this. And he's grief-stricken and mourning and sorrowful and in prayer. Come to verses 5 through 9, and we see his vision. Uh, as you go through here, uh, we see in verse 5, this uh, 5 and 6, a um, just this uh, incredible figure dressed in linen, waist girded with a belt of pure gold, body like barrel, uh, face had the appearance of lightning. Some people think that this is uh, a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus, and they'll back that up <clears throat> by referring to Revelation 1. 13 and 14, where a similar Jesus appears looking very similar. 
others who object to that, who don't think this is a uh, pre-incarnate vision of Christ, um, notices in verse 13 that this person needs the help of an angel to overcome the prince of Persia. And they allege Jesus wouldn't have needed that kind of assistance. So I'll leave it for you to decide, uh, sort that out, and uh, come to the conclusion. Let me know if you have a strong opinion one way or another. I'd be interested to know and to know why. Verses 8 to 9 tell us what uh, Daniel's reaction was. I was left alone, saw this great vision, yet no strength was left in me. My natural color turned to a deathly pallor, and I retained no strength. Look at that. Twice he mentions being weak uh, before this version. The color drained from his face. He's brought uh, into humility here. I heard the sound of his words, and as soon as I heard the sound of the words, I fell into a deep sleep on the ground with my face to the ground. So he he does this uh, immediate face plant. He... he um, uh, collapses, it seems, and loses consciousness as he's confronted with this vision and what's going on here. We see this uh, explanation, I think, in verses 10 through 14. Uh, in verses 10 and 11, D Daniel's comforted. He's uh, supernaturally, at this point, I think, strengthened, was able to stand on his feet. He's got to stand up uh, in order to receive this word. I have, I've been sent to you. This person is saying, and when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. So Daniel's got to receive what's been sent to him. His prayer has been answered, it says in verse 12. It's been heard. What is this prayer? Could be the prayer from Daniel chapter 9, how are you going to restore the kingdom? Or it could be uh, maybe a little bit more detail that Daniel's asking for about how this is all going to come, come together. How is all this... Uh, judgment that's going to come on Israel, all this, uh, all these kingdoms that are going to break. Um, how is this all going to work out so that the kingdom comes? Maybe asking that. <clears throat> Verses 13 and 14 are really interesting, I think. It says, The prince of the kingdom of Persia was withstanding me for 21 days. So Daniel's response here from heaven is delayed for 21 days because this uh, person that Daniel sees is being restrained or interfered with by the prince of the per kingdom of Persia. And Michael, uh, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Now, Michael seems to be more of a warrior. Uh, it seems to be his character here. We see him later in the book of Revelation as well. Uh, D Michael seems to be a warrior, and he comes and helps this figure. And um, notice it shows, I think, that um, behind the curtain of uh, geopolitical events that are going on around us, even down to our own day, uh, there's, our, there's supernatural forces that are at work um, resisting God even, trying to keep God from executing his purposes. Of course, they're not going to be able to keep him from doing that. But that doesn't mean they're not trying. So, verses 13 and 14, we see this three-week delay because of the resistance of the king of Persia, uh, this angelic evil angel that's assisting him. Verse 14 in the vision, we see Daniel is going to uh, have this vision for the future, that this is for the latter days, for the future pertains to what's coming. So again, it's... Uh, Maybe uh, the answer is disturbing, um, and certainly not at all what Daniel's expecting. We see Daniel enabled again in verses 15 through 19. Uh, verses 15 and 16, he's terrorized by this vision. Um, but um, in verses 17 and 18, he's completely undone. But he's equipped to receive the word in verses, verse 19. Um, I think, uh, you know, I wonder myself, and I you know I've had uh, some sense of this, maybe not as dramatic as Daniel, but have you ever been, I don't know, terrorized or humbled or had a um, kind of a gut-wrenching reaction to God's Word? Have you ever been so convicted? 
or perhaps uh, so illuminated as to uh, find yourself feeling kind of undone? Well, that's what's happened to Daniel. And like Daniel, I think we need supernatural enablement to not only receive God's word, but to also properly respond to it. Be a great thing to pray for, for a more profound receiving and reaction to God's word. As we go on in this vision, we see this cosmic conflict in verses 20 and 21. It says, do you understand why he came to you? But I shall now return to fight against the prince of Persia. So the fight's not over. He's been delayed, uh, but the fight's not over. So I'm going forth and behold, the prince of Greece is about to come. Hmm, this is interesting. The angels are contesting both Persia and Greece. And these two nations are contesting over what is called world domination. They're after having a one world government. We could think of today's World Economic Council perhaps being satanically inspired by evil angels trying to take over the world. Now God has revealed to us in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter was it 8 or 9, that he has a plan for world domination, that Greece is going to succeed Persia as the world power, Angelic resistance is ultimately futile. The plan is going to ex unfold exactly according to God's timetable. So if you want to see what God is doing in the world uh, with these world powers that come and go, keep an eye on Israel. Keep an eye on what's going, there, going on there and how God is bringing about what he planned. Look at verse 21. I'll tell you what is inscribed in the writing of truth. We could call that the scripture of truth. This is a reference to God's plan for the kingdoms of the earth. And it's revealed by God according to his discretion. Drop down just a few verses. In verse, chap verse 2 of chapter 11, he says, Now I will tell you the truth. So here is the truth, the writing of the truth that God has promised. God is bringing the past to pass. It's by way of application in these last days. Let me just ask you again, have you been completely physically exhausted at the revelation of God and his word? I know I have sometimes. It's rare, I admit. But oftentimes, even in the, um, if it's not that extreme, find myself confronted by God's word. Uh, his word demands I change, become more like his son. Have you ever experienced physical weakness because of what God's word reveals? Well, try to imagine what your pastor or your Bible teacher experiences each week as they're actively seeking to encounter God in his word so they can teach his word to you. Maybe you can support them in prayer, words of encouragement, financial support for them or their ministry or their church. These are all things that you can do that would be greatly encouraging to the Daniel that's in your life, your pastor, your Bible teacher, particular ministry you follow that brings you God's word. I pray, brothers and sisters, that you can be an encouragement to men and women like that who are encountering God on a daily basis and bringing you the fruits of that encounter. God bless you, brothers and sisters. God bless you as we wrap up uh, these last two chapters in the book of Daniel and wrap up our reading plan through the year.